Yes, you're a very socially active person. Huh? <laughs> I'm just sitting here in my room or going for a walk uh, or uh, very limited. I'm, I'm out also and doing some shopping. Huh? But yeah. I'm getting into, into closed environments in and out very quickly. Yes. How are you, Garanga? Are you well? I'm okay. Yes, thank you very much. And um, we ju I just see Pandava Prabhu is here. Isn't that beautiful? Pandava Prabhu, Hare Krishna. I hope you are well. Uh, and uh, I hope you will give us a little bit of some kirtan. We have apologies from Ben. Uh, and let's see who else comes. Uh. Pandava Prabhu, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Hare Krishna. I had a problem with connecting, so I'm not sure. What was okay, are yeah, you connected now? So that is okay. Everything is just fine. Do uh, you have some kirtan for us? Some bhajan? Something nice? Kiriraja Govardhana ki zai. Hare Krishna. What is Madhachi saying? Uh, that was Polish. <laughs> we are uh, here. Mataji Bhagavati Devidasi and me Pandavadas. Yes, welcome her. Hare Krishna, welcome. Uh, do you know, just before we start, before you start with your kirtan, do you know Shruta Kirti Prabhu? Maybe we've met, but I don't, I don't remember. I'm, I'm just. I'm not he meeting is... many devotees. Karanga, right. is this that lady that's a um, girl who was in a car crash? No, no. It's a, it's a Prabhu. Huh? No, no. Shruta Kirti. No, this is not. Her name is different. Her He's... name is different. Yes. Shruta Kirti is a, is a long time, uh, goes a long way back, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he wrote a book. I can't recall the title right now. He was Srila Prabhupada's servant for a very long time, and Srila Prabhupada trained him. And he has a, is a huge treasure grove of uh, uh, stories with Srila Prabhupada. So he is at the moment in Vrindavan. He was in Mayapur, he's in Vrindavan. When he gets back to the US in late December, early January, then uh, I think we will get him for a Saturday because uh, Indian time uh, is very difficult. Uh, it would be past midnight now. So he will be our guest speaker, I think, in December. So that is good news. Uh, he's a very known, Google him up. He's an extremely well known personality and very, very much liked devotee with loads of association with Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada almost adopted him as his son. He was very young when he joined the movement, and Srila Prabhupada was very fond of him and took care of him in so many ways. Okay, Pandava Prabhu, the microphone and the camera sideways is yours. If you're ready, are you ready? Then I move the spotlight to you. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Shri Govinda Gopinata Nadana. Shama Kunda, Radha Kunda, 
Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Pandava Prabhu. Can we have the translation? Was did you hear it well? Yes. Okay, because anyway, it sounds like my telephone is going crazy and I wasn't sure if we were just disconnected or not. So, so all glories to Radha and Krishna in the divine forest of Vrindavan. All glories to the three preside deities of Vrindavan, Sri Govinda, Gopinath and Madan Mohan. All glory to Shyama Kunda, Radha Kunda, Govardhan Hill, and the Yamuna River, Kalindi. All glory to the great forest known as Mahavana, where Krishna and Balaram displayed all of their childhood pastimes. All glories to Keshi God, where Krishna killed the Keshi demon. All glories to Vamshiva tree where Krishna attracted all the gopis to come, to, uh, come by playing his flute. Glories to us, the son of Nanda Maharaj, Sri Krishna performed all of his pastimes. All glories to Krishna's divine father and mother, Nanda and Yashoda. All glories to the cowherd boys headed by Sridham, the, other, the older brother of Shrimati Radharani, and Ananda Manjari. All, all glories to the cows and calves of Raja. Yeah. All glories to Radha's divine father and mother, Vishabano, and the beautiful Kirti Da. All glories to Pornamasi, the mother of Sandipani Muni, grandmother of Madhu Mangal and Nandimuki and beloved disciple of the Varshi Narada. All glories to the young cowherd maidens of Raj. All glories, all glories to Gopishvara Shiva, who resides in Vrindavan in order to protect the Holy Dham. All glories, all glories to Krishna's funny Brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal. 
All glories to Rama God, where Lord Balaram performed his rasa dance. All glories to Lord Balaram, the son of Rohini. All glories, all glories to all of the residents of Vrindavan. All glories to the wives of the proud Vedic Brahmana. All glories to the wives of the Kaliya serpent. Through pure devotion, they all obtained the lotus feet of Lord Govinda. All glories to the place where the rasa dance of Sri Krishna was performed. All glories to Radha and Shyam. All glories, all glories to the divine rasa dance, which is the most beautiful of all Lord Krishna's pastimes. All glories, all glories to the mellow of conjugal love, which is the most excellent of all rasas and is propagated in Vrat by Sri Krishna in the form of the divine Padakya Prava, Pada Mother Love. Remembering the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda's consort, Sri Jana Devi is very fallen and lowly. Jaya Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Jai, Jai Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Very nice. Jaya Radha, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. Of course, it's a very famous, famous song. Right, welcome. Welcome back, Amit. You had some problems. Welcome, Pandava Bhagavati Mataji. Welcome, Rashmi, Ben. Apologies. Don't know why. Uh, Vaishnava Mataji, she is uh, visiting her brother for Bai Duch today. Of course, Bai Duch. We have so many brothers. Uh, yeah, brother Amit is here. Uh, brother Pandava Prabhu is here. Sister Bhagavati, Sister Rashmi. Uh, so... Brothers is not just family, but of course that's important. I said to her, why don't you join with your brother in Loughborough for half an hour or something? She just laughed. <laughs> so maybe her brother is not that inclined for spirituality. I don't know. So anyway, that's it for the moment. And our Brakash, he is just traveling from Mathura to Delhi. So I wonder, has he been in Vrindavan all that time huh? and joining us from Vrindavan after midnight? I'm not sure. Or maybe he is just, I mean, it's, it's half a day trip to Vrindavan from Delhi. It's not, not that bad. I just wondered, I remember Madura, Tundla railway station, how I mean, anybody has been going on train between Mathura and, uh, or rather, Tundla and uh, Delhi? I kind of recall there was a Kalgamail Express, the oldest Indian railway with the Raj, British Raj, <laughs> not Boris Johnson, the British Raj, used to travel on the Kalgamail. Rashmi, do you have any? Do you know anything about the Kalga Mail? Is 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 that kind of, or is the Kalga Mail just from the south to Delhi and not via near near Mathura? Anyone I don't knows? know, Prabhuji. I've heard of it, but I don't know. I've not traveled on it. Okay. I think it goes from other cities also. Yes. Nowadays, people go by taxi. I guess so, but. Uh, Alcamel Express was the cheapest option some 20 years ago. Uh, okay. Prabhu, uh, Bhagavati Mataji wants to say a few words about, about that, yes. that uh, devotee uh, mentioned in the, in the conversation at the beginning. Shri No, the one that one of these... No, no. I, I think Amit Prabhu asked about the Mataji who had a very serious accident. car accident a few weeks ago. So because I understood that maybe nobody, not everybody knows. Sorry that it is at the beginning, but then I don't know what happens at the, at the end of our program and I will be, I will have to go. So 
few words yes. that all of us. Her name is Rita Mataji. She, is, she has been a devotee for a long time here in Leicester. She has beautiful deities. Dancing Gornitai. Dancing Gornitai. I don't remember the specific names. And she is also, she has been also the police officer for, for some time, for many years also. And she is beautifully singing bhajans. She's very talented singer. And I don't know exactly when it was, but I think already might be even six weeks ago, but I'm not sure. She was going, she was biking on the, she was on the street, on the road. She was going to her place in Loughborough and she was, she was using bicycle, nothing special one can say. And one car hit her and it was the driver right, was, driver was under the, under the um, influence drugs he he was dr under drugs so and there was even an article in the local magazine about the accident but the result is that she had uh, maybe three weeks ago the surgery and until then she was in the in coma. still in you know in a this yes, coma? emergency board uh, emergency uh i don't i know i the english name uh, uh, emergency coma. hospital and then after the surgery she didn't wake up and she's still in coma for all of these days. Yesterday I spoke about her with the uh, temple president's wife here in Leicester. And she said that the devotee, the Rita Mataji is starting to react by the movement of her eyes and some very slightly, but she's reacting. Some Somebody showed her Prabhupada's picture and she reacted somehow. So her condition is very serious, but I understood that there is a, a bit better. So there is like a request which is repeated in the temple of Leicester or Iskon temple in Leicester for, for all of these days to, for the prayer. So if, all of us or anybody anybody wants to support her by prayer it would be really appreciated because this is the condition coma like this can as far as i know can be even for a long long time but there is some light of hope which appeared recently this is what i wanted to say thank you very much Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Bhagavad Mataji Hare Krishna, for updating us. Of course, we all know Rita. Huh? If you have been in uh, Leicester, Radha Yatra, and she was always singing on the stage. And uh, yes, let's all keep her in our prayers, please. Thank you. I want to welcome Ami, has just joined us. I had been uh, I had been in some conversation on Facebook. Ami, welcome her. Welcome everyone and especially welcome Ami from, uh, what is Toronto. it, Toronto? <laughs> Toronto. Hare Bol, Hare Krishna. Toronto. Hare Krishna. Where, where are you, Ami? Uh, I'm in Toronto, Canada. Toronto. Yes. Yes. Hey, that's beautiful. Anyone remembers Rashmi? You might remember Ami because she has been here at the Leicester Temple. She comes from Leicester, but she has left us a long time ago and she moved uh, far away to far away lands, uh, but now she is with us again. Rashmi, you remember? Send a heart if you remember Ami. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, can I spotlight you, uh, get you on the camera? Is that okay? Sure. Uh, uh, can you see me? What? One moment. Can we see you? Yes, we can see you. Hare Krishna, alongside with me. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you so much. What's your time? Uh, the time here is about 3.40 p.m. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. That is just, just seems to be the right time. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Oh, my God. How long has it been since we were connected? I believe uh, back, uh, I, I know I attended the uh, ISKCON Center in Leicester back in 2008 when I was studying at the University of Leicester. Oh, university, 2008. Yeah. That's a long uh, time. That's a long time back, right? Yeah, very long time. Yes, we uh, we had, uh, we picked up a few devotees from the university. Uh, were you getting in touch with us through the Food for Life program there? Uh, because we did. Uh, you mean when I was in Leicester? No, when you were at the uni. Uh, did... Actually, I no, I was not involved with the Food for Life program there at that time. I mean, involved by eating the prasad we are distributing at the Leicester University. Right, right, right. I, I, I tried looking into it, but then uh, I don't remember exactly what happened. I think uh, because of the uh, the course load or something, I wasn't able to attend it. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Because we did extensive prasadam distribution in okay, Leicester. Okay. So what are you doing in Toronto? Toronto, right? What are you doing there? So Toronto is, is home for me here. So... Um, I'm working for a vaccine company, so I'm working there as a scientist. Oh! So, <laughs> you so, getting us a needle in the arm, isn't it? <laughs> basically, yes, yes. To oh. keep everybody healthy. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Ami, will you stay with us till 9 o'clock? Uh, sure, I'll do my best, yes. What does that mean, you do your best? No, I, I'll, be, I'll be here. <laughs> Yes, okay. Hare Krishna. So I put the spotlight back on me. Uh, da, da, da. Here we go. And our, our next part in the program is I want to read a little bit something. And that reading is about Madhavendra Puri. If you ever have been, and Rashmi, yes, of course, you have been to Vrindavan. And you have been, and others as well, around Govardhan Hill. You have seen that little temple on top of Govardhan Hill. As devotees, as Vaishnavas, we don't go to that temple because we would have to climb with our feet on Giriraj, and we don't want to do that. But some people from Zamasa or local people say go there, and the cows, of course, go there, and the uh, antelopes go there, the blue cows go there. So on set, where that temple is, there was a Gopal deity installed by Madhavendra Puri. Of course, Madhavendra Puri, we know, uh, his disciple was Ishvara Puri, and Ishvara Puri was formally accepted uh, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, as his spiritual master. And he met Ishvara Puri in, uh, in Gaya, and later on also, before, uh, where after Lord Chaitanya came back from Gaya of doing the a ceremony for his departed father, Chaganad Mishra, then uh, Lord Chaitanya had completely changed. He, will be, he was totally ecstatic. Uh, while before he played the role of the uh, Nimai Pandit who defeated everyone and uh, uh, some even tried to avoid him because he was always uh, trying to debate with them and then they got defeated anyway. So, 
That is Ishvara Puri, and Ishvara Puri, spirit and master, was Madhavendra Puri, and Madhavendra Puri introduced in the Gaudiya, in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, our Sampradaya, our lineage, uh, Madhavendra Puri introduced uh, uh, the mood, the feeling of uh, separation from Krishna. And uh, while he was in his last days, uh, he that famous verse from the Bhagavatam, uh, where he speaks the words of Radharani, Aidina, Aidina, the Yatra, not the Hey, and so on. So let's hear how this Madhavendra Puri discovered the Gopal deity. I don't think we that story is not very so very well known. So I thought that would be a very good uh, way of hearing that. That is found in Chaitanya Chaitamrita Madhya 4, 21 onwards, Madhavendra Puri's devotional service. Once, Sri Madhavendra Puri traveled to Vrindavan. And of course, he traveled to Vrindavan after uh, that pastime of Kshira, Kora Gopinata, the deity who stole the sweet rice for him. And uh, then the people gathered around him and uh, he became very famous and he didn't like that. We don't want to become famous. Vaishnavas are very humble. They don't want a huge crowd and chai, Maharaj. <laughs> no, we try not to. We try to avoid that. So he avoided that and he traveled to Vrindavan where he came upon the hill known as Govardhan. So that's Madhavendra Puri. He came to Govardhan Hill. Madhavendra Puri was almost mad in his ecstasy of love of Godhead. And he did not know whether it was day or night. Sometimes he stood up and sometimes he fell on the ground. He could not discriminate between whether he was in a proper place or not. You know, if one becomes so absorbed in ecstatic love of Krishna, one doesn't know, is it day or night, and so on. After circumambulating the hill, Madhavendra Puri went to Govinda Kund and took his bath. He then sat beneath a tree to take his evening rest. So it's not a hotel, it's just under a tree, like the Goswamis of Rindavan also. And just a short note, Govinda Kund, famous place where uh, Indra's elephant, Aravata, he was bathing. Lala there, after he apologized for inundating the Govardhan Hill and the, the, the bridge passes and so on. And also, Govinda Kund is where our Giriraj in Leicester comes from. He comes from Govinda Kund. And I close my eyes or don't close my eyes, I see exactly that bush uh, near Govinda Kun, just a little bit away where Giriraj comes from. While he was sitting beneath a tree, an unknown coward boy came with a pot of milk, placed it before Madhavendra Puri and smilingly addressed him as follows. Oh, Madhavendra Puri, please drink some milk I have brought. Why don't you bag some food to eat? What kind of meditation are you undergoing? When he saw the beauty of that boy, Madhavendra Puri became very satisfied. Hearing his sweet words, he forgot all hunger and thirst. Madhavendra Puri said, Who are you? Where do you reside? And how did you know that I was fasting? The boy replied, Sir, I am a cowherd boy, and I reside in this village. In my village, no one fasts. That's almost like in the Hare Krishna temple, no one fasts except on the Kadashi, because there is always so much food. In this village, a person can beg food from others and thus eat. Some people drink only milk, 
But if a person does not ask anyone for food, I supply him with his eatables. What a nice service, hmm? Almost like Vaishnava Mataji. He supplies everyone with eatables. Rush me, I come tomorrow. The woman who came here to take water saw you and said, supplied me with this milk and sent me to you. The boy continued, I must go very soon to milk the cows, but I shall return, take back this milk pot from you. Saying this, the boy left the place. Indeed, he suddenly could be seen no more, and Madhavendra Puri's heart was filled with wonder. After drinking some milk, Madhavendra Puri washed the pot and put it aside. He looked towards the path, but the boy never returned. Madhavendra Puri could not sleep. He sat and chanted the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. And at the end of the night, he dozed a little, and his external activities stopped. In a tree, Madhavendra Puri saw the very same boy. The boy came before him, and holding his hand, took him to a bush in the jungle. The boy showed Madhavendra Puri the bush and said, I reside in this bush, and because of this I suffer very much from severe cold, rain showers, winds, and scorching heat. Please bring the people of the village and get them to take me out of this bush. Then have them situate me nicely on top of the hill. Please construct a temple on top of that hill, the boy continued, and install me in that temple. After this, wash me with large quantities of cold water so that my body may be cleansed. For many days I have been observing you, and I have been wondering, when will Madhavendra Puri come here to serve me? I have accepted your service due to your ecstatic love for me. Thus I shall appear, and by my audience all fallen souls will be delivered. My name is Gopal. Jai, Gopal. I am the lifter of Govardhan Hill. I was installed by Vrachra, Vachra. That is, of course, Krishna's great-grandson, Vachranath. And here I am the authority. When the Muslims attacked the priests who were serving me, hit me in the bush, in the jungle. Then he ran away out of fear of the attack. Since the priest went away, I have been staying in this bush. It is very good that you have come here. Now just remove me with care. After saying this, the boy disappeared. Then Madhavendra Puri woke up and began to consider his dream. So if we have a dream of Krishna like this, this is not ordinary. After we wake up and remember that dream, or of Srila Prabhupada, or of the devotees, we should also consider, like Madhavendra Puri did. Madhavendra Puri began to lament. I saw Lord Krishna directly, but I could not recognize him. Thus he fell down on the ground in ecstatic love. Yeah, sometimes people say, oh, if Krishna would be in front of me, then I would like this Arjuna, then I would also chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> Even Mother Vendra Puri couldn't recognize Krishna, and only... Uh, five personalities, the five Pandavas really understood that Krishna was the supreme personality of Godhead. Even Lord Brahma was in doubt. Uh, and certainly Lord Indra could not recognize him. Madhavendra Puri cried for some time, but then he fixed his mind on executing the order of Gopal. Sath, he became tranquil. 
If we are in turmoil in our mind and we meditating on our devotional service or we chant Hare Krishna, then we become also very, very calm. After taking his morning bath, Madhavendra Puri entered the village and assembled all the people. Then he spoke as follows. The proprietor of this village, Govardhan Dhari, is lying in the bushes. Let us go there and rescue him from that place. The bushes are very dense and we will not be able to enter the jungle. Therefore, take choppers and spades to clear the way. After hearing this, all the people accompanied Madhavendra Puri with great, great pleasure. According to his directions, they cut down bushes, cleared a path and entered the jungle. When they saw the deity covered with dirt and grass, they were stuck with wonder and pleasure. After they had cleansed the body of the deity, some of them said, the deity is very heavy. No single person can move him. Since the deity was very heavy, some of the stronger men assembled to carry him to the top of the hill. Mother Vendrapuri also went there. A big stone was made into a throne and the deity was installed upon it. Another big stone was placed behind the deity for support. All the Brahmana priests of the village gathered together with new water pots and water from Govindakund. Lake was brought there and filtered. When the deity was being installed, water was brought from Govindakund in hundreds of new pots. There were musical sounds of bugles and drums and the singing of women. During the festival, at the installation ceremony, some people sang and some danced. All the milk, yogurt, clarified butter in the village were brought to the festival. Various foods and sweetmeats, as well as other kinds of presentations, were brought there. I am unable to describe all these. Unable, I am unable, that is, of course, to speak as the writer of Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Krishna Das Kaviraj. The village has brought a large quantity of tulsi leaves, flowers, and various kinds of garments. Then Sri Madhavendra Puri personally began the Abhishek, the bathing ceremony. After all, inauspicious things were driven away by the chanting of the mantra. The deity's bathing ceremony started. First, the deity was massaged with a large quantity of oil so that the body became very glossy. After the first bath, further bathings were conducted with pancha gavya and then with panchamrita. Then the mahasnan was performed with ghee and water, which had been brought in 100 pots. Of course, pancha gavya, these are all the ingredients uh, of the cow, from cow urine to cow dung and everything. After the mahasnan was finished, the deity was again massaged with scented oil and his body made glossy. Then the last bathing ceremony was performed with scented water kept within a conch shell. After the body of the deity was cleansed, he was dressed very nicely with new garments, then sandalwood pulp, tulsi garlands, and other fragrant flower garlands were placed upon the body of the deity. After the basing ceremony was finished, incense and lamps were burned and all kinds of food offered before the deity. These foods included yogurt, milk, and as many sweetmeats as, was, as were received. The deity was first offered many varieties of food, then scented drinking water in new pots, and then water from wa for washing the mouth. Finally, pan mixed with a variety of spices was offered. After the last offering of tambula and pan, boga aratika was performed. Finally, everyone offered various prayers and then obeisances, falling flat before the deity in full surrender. As soon as the people of the village had understood that the deity was going to be installed, 
They had brought the entire stocks of rice and dal and wheat flour. They brought such large quantities that the entire surface of the hill, of the top of the hill, was filled. It's amazing. That is, that is love. Immediately here, uh, the deity will be installed and everybody comes forward and gives everything. When the villagers brought the stock of rice, dal, and flour, the potters of the village brought all kinds of cooking pots. And in the morning, the cooking began. So now we're coming for, to the cooking. Ten Brahmana cooks, cooked the food grains, and five Brahmana cooked both dry and liquid vegetables. vegetables. The vegetables preparations were made from various kinds of spinach, roots and fruits collected from the forest. And someone made bada and badi by mashing dal. In this way, the brahmanas prepared all kinds of food. Five to seven men prepared a huge quantity of chapatis, which were completely covered with ghee, as were all the vegetables, rice and dal. Of course, this ghee is directly made from from butter, which is made from yogurt. So that is not the ghee from the supermarket. That taste is very, very different in the purity as well. All the cooked rice was stuck on palasa leaves, which were on new cloth spread over the ground. Around the stack of cooked rice were stacks of chapatis and all the vegetables and liquid vegetables preparations were placed in different pots and put around them. Pots of yogurt, milk, buttermilk, shikharini, sweet rice, cream and solid cream were placed alongside vegetables. In this way, the Anakutta ceremony was performed and Madhavendra Puri Goswami personally offered everything to Gopal. So that term Anakutta, everybody from within the Indian community knows Anakutta means a lot Anna, food, a lot of food offering. And we like to perform this ceremony. Many water pots were filled with scented water for drinking and Lord Sri Gopal, who had been hungry for many days, ate everything offered to him. Also, Sri Gopal ate everything offered, still by the touch of his transcendental hand. Everything remained as before. As we know, when we offer in the temple. Same thing. How Gopal ate everything while the food remained the same was transcendentally perceived by Madhavendra Puri Goswami. Nothing remains a secret to the devotees of the Lord. The wonderful festival and installation of Sri Gopalji was arranged in one day. Certainly all this was accomplished by the potency of Gopal. No one but a devotee can understand this. Madhavendra Puri offered water to Gopal for washing his mouth and he gave him betel nuts to chew. Then, with Arti was, while Arti was performed, all the people chanted, Jai, Jai, all glories to Gopal. Arranging for the Lord's rest, Sri Madhavendra Puri brought a new cot and over this he spread a new bed sheet and thus made the bed ready. A temporary temple was constructed by covering the bed all around with a straw mattress. Thus there was a bed and a straw mattress to cover it. After the Lord was laid down to rest on the bed, Madhavendra Puri gathered all the Brahmanas who had prepared the prasadam and said to them, Now feed everyone sumptuously, from the children up to the aged. The children get first. All the people gathered there, sat down to honor the prasad, and by and by they took food. All the brahmanas and their wives were fed first. Those who took prasadam included, but not only the people of Govardhan village, 
but also those who came from the other villages to see the deity of Gopal, they too were offered prasad to eat. Seeing the influence of Mother Vendapuri, all the people gathered there were struck with wonder. They saw that the Adnakuta ceremony, which had been performed before during the time of Lord Krishna, was now take place, taking place again by the mercy of Sri Mother Vendapuri. And I think he will stop. I mean, that goes on and on. But um, there is also uh, the story of uh, Krishna expanding as a hill. Uh, in, he, he, he shouted out, Aniyo, 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 give me more, give me more. And uh, he was seemingly uh, hungry, endlessly hungry, and the people brought everything. They had nothing left to offer to him, and still Krishna said, Aniyo, 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 give me more, give me more. So Balaram had an idea. Balaram is very clever. He knows Krishna's mind. He offered Krishna a tulsi leaf, and that pacified him. No more Aniyo, Aniyo. And there's a village with that same name. And he said, if any, anybody who visits that village, he will not come back to this material world. So if you do go on a parigram, make a point, find Aniyo. Is, is that the name of the village? If, any, if that is not, correct me, please. So we have been there which is very nice. Okay, here I stop. Hare Krishna. That was the story of Gopal, installation of Gopal and Mother Vendrapuri. So I believe, Pandava Prabhu, you have also something to tell us a story to read and then uh, Rashmi Mataji has also something to, uh, in her own words, a story. Pandava Prabhu, you have anything? Yes, very short, and uh, because we still have uh, Kartik. So just before I relate, I mean, I will tell something. I will sing one, uh, uh, one. If your camera is sideways, and I will spotlight you, and you will get you on the camera. Yes, now, go ahead. Uh, so I, I will just sing the seventh shloka of Damodarashtaka just to, to relate to the story. So that seventh shloka's meaning is oh Lord Damodar, just as the two sons of Kuvara Manigiva and Nala Kuvara were delivered from the curse of Narada and made into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with rope to a wooden grinding mortar in the same way, please give to me your own Prema Bhakti. I only long for this and have no desire for any kind of liberation. So uh, it's, um, so as we know from, uh, from, from the Damodara Lila, Krishna uh, liberated two demigods, uh, sons of Kuvara from, uh, from the curse of Narada. They were standing as trees on the Nanda Maharaja's courtyard. And uh, there are beautiful prayers by the uh, Nalakovara Imani Griva. And the last part of these prayers are, we therefore pray 
that we may always be engaged in your transcendental loving service by speaking only about your glories and hearing about your transcendental pastimes. May our hands and other limbs be engaged in your service and our minds always be concentrated on your lotus feet and our heads always bow down before the all-pervading universal form of your lordship. So that was the desire of, of these two demigods. And um, uh, this is, uh, I mean, we, we've, uh, we found it on, on Facebook posts, some devotees. There are so many Vaishnava literature and we are not always uh, familiar with everything. So there is a book called Gopal, Gopal Champu by Chiva Goswami. He's of course famous by his Shat Sandarbas, but this book, Gopal Champu, uh, if somebody has uh, this option, maybe next time I will try to find some uh, other portion we, uh, um, connected with uh, Damodara Lila. They describe a very uh, intimate uh, side of the Damodara Lila story. And it's also mentioned there uh, that after Nala Kuvara and Manigriva were delivered uh, from these trees, uh, the maybe popular understanding is that when they were uh, released, they went back to heavenly planets where, where they been as a sons of Kuvara. Rashmi, what do you have for us? Are you there, Rashmi Mataji? Yes. Yes, Prabhuji, I'm there, yes. Hare Krishna. Um, I've been just reading about the glories of Govardhan Hill, so I'll just talk five minutes about that and about one of the pastimes called Dan Keli. So okay, Rashmi, before you start, uh, I would like to spotlight you. Have you managed how to work out your, uh, uh, no, no. your phone? No, no, no. Don't no. Me. no, no, don't spotlight me today. No. Okay, so I'll next time. I'll yes. just talk with my camera off. Yes. So, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So, wh why is Govardhan Hill so glorious? What is so special about Govardhan Hill? So, um, Govardhan Hill was described by the gopis, and in fact, Radharani himself gave him the name of Hari Das Varya. That means the best of the devotees of Hari. So she gave him this name, Hari Das Varya. Uh, and why is that? Because uh, Govardhan Hill facilitated and witnessed all of the pastimes of Krishna and the gopis, and especially the intimate pastimes between all the mischief between Krishna and Radharani. So he was a silent witness to all of that. He had caves, he had kunjas, there were waterfalls, there were ponds, um, everything, everything. Uh, he facilitated everything for um, Krishna and Radha. There was fresh grass for the cows. So he, he served Krishna in the form of a stone. And because he was in the form of a stone, um, Radharani and the gopis and Krishna would not be embarrassed by a, a form like he didn't have a human, uh, a male or a female form. So uh, the pastimes could carry on without any disturbance. Uh, and one of these, so Govardhan Hill, when you go on Govardhan Parikrama, uh, the entire path around Govardhan Hill is full of all these various pastimes. So one very famous pastime is the Dan, um, Dan Keli or the Dan, Dan Ghati pastime. This is the pastime where Krishna asks for tax from the gopis and they get very angry with him. Uh, so Dan Ghati is a tiny narrow gorge in, uh, in between Govardhan Hill. It's a very tiny path. And these gopis, when they used to, they were business ladies. They used to go and sell uh, all the milk products, milk, butter, 
yogurt. So they, they would have to pass through that hill as a shortcut to go into the villages beyond. So what Krishna would do is often he would stand there along with all the Gopals and he would demand, one day he said to, he demanded tax. He would not pass, let them pass through. He said, if you want to use this path uh, through Govardhan, then you have to pay tax. So the gopis were started quarreling with him and they said that, uh, why should we pay tax? Uh, does this belong to your forefathers or your father? Uh, your father might be the king of uh, Vrindavan. However, this is been given to Radharani. This, is, this land belongs to Radharani. So he said, how does it belong to Radharani? So he says, this has been gifted to her by Vrinda Devi. So Krishna is very clever. He says, okay, if it has been gifted by Vrinda Devi, whatever is belongs to Vrinda Devi, that belongs to me because I'm the husband of Vrinda Devi. So the gopi said, okay, let's call uh, Vrinda Devi. So Vrinda Devi is called. And she says, uh, the gopis ask her, so are you the, husband, are you the wife of this uh, uh, gopal, of this black boy? So they say, no, no, he's a cheater. He calls everybody, he says, I'm the husband of all the gopis. Depending upon what he wants with them, he will make every gopi his wife. So he's a cheater, don't believe him. So this quarrel used to happen nearly every day. And Govardhan was the witness of this. And what Krish, what Yogmaya would do is, every day uh, this quarrel would happen, but the gopis would forget it because the yoga maya made them forget it. So next day when they are having the quarrel again, again the same thing is happening. And again they're going through the quarrel again. So these very, very sweet pastimes have happened in and around Govardhan. So it is said in the scriptures that out of all the creation in the spiritual and in the material creation, Vaikuntha is top, but better than Vaikuntha is Mathura. Better than Mathura is Vrindavan. Better than Vrindavan is Govardhan. And amongst and better than Govardhan is Radha Kund. So Radha Kund and Sham Kund, they are considered, Govardhan is in the shape of a peacock. So Govardhan and Radha Kund, uh, Sham Kund and Radha Kund, they are considered the eyes of that peacock. So Radha Kund is also, all these pastimes of Krishna, which we read about, lot of them have happened at Govardhan. So these uh, gopis used to pray uh, that why does the day, you know, they used to pray to, uh, they used to say to the uh, Narayan, why does this uh, daytime come? When daytime comes, Krishna runs off to Govardhan with his friends. And then the gopals, the gopas would pray, why does night come? Uh, because then now we can no longer play in uh, Govardhan with Krishna. Because nighttime, Krishna would be with the gopis and enjoy the rasa dance pastimes. So this was always the mood of these gopis. So Govardhan is very, very glorious as a result. There's so, so many other pastimes. There is Kusum Sarovar. Uh, Kusum Sarovar is a beautiful, um, <clears throat> it's a kund, uh, which is the starting point of the Govardhan Parikrama. And over there, there is a tiny little temple. It is called uh, Radha Ban Vihari. So Ban Bihari means the Lord who roams around in the forest. Uh, and there is a beautiful deity there. Uh, I think it is Giriraj. And he's combing Radharani's hair. And it's a very nice deity. Uh, and uh, it's the, uh, the Pujaris have been doing the seva for many, many years in that temple. That Kusum Sarovar is a very um, glorious place. Lots of pastimes of Radha and Krishna take place in that Kusum Sarovar. In fact, they start from there. So actually, I remember the Pujari in that temple, uh, Scottish Pujari, he had told me that uh, <clears throat> when the sun is in a certain direction on Kusum Sarovar, they know this is where Radha and uh, this is where Krishna and the gopis have reached. So now their morning pastimes are taking place. Now, depending on where the sun is on Kusum Sarovar, now they know that these pastimes, next set of pastimes have started. So it's all very, um, it's all very punctual. Everything is organized by Vrinda Devi, very punctually in that place. (laughs) 
Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Rashmi Madaji. Beautiful, beautiful pastimes. Huh? Dana Kelly, uh, the tax collecting pastime. I have been there with Dina Bandu. We walked down that little narrow gorge uh, and uh, with hills on the right and uh, stone hill on the left and there's a little temple there. It's absolutely beautiful. One can only walk one person. Huh? So a single line has to be made with the devotees walking down there. And of course, Kushum Jaroba is also the place when Narada wanted to uh, witness the pastimes of the Rasa dance, but an ordinary male cannot witness that. So uh, one Gobi instructed him, you have to take on a female from Narada Muni, uh, I'll, you go in the Kushum Sarova, you dip down and when you come out, you will have a female form and then you can witness the Rasa dancer. And it happened so. Then Narada became Naradi. And after being ecstatic and having witnessed Krishna's Rasa dance and relationship with the gopis, then again he went into Kund and he came out as Narada again. So many many pastimes there. Uh, also, I believe the pastime took place, Radharani used to pick flowers. Flowers for what? Flowers for worshipping Krishna ultimately. And there are many uh, trees and bushes with fragrant flowers and uh, Krishna knew that. So he climbed on a tree with a beautiful fragrant flowers, flowers and Radharani picked and but the flowers were quite high up, so then she couldn't reach. And Krishna had his foot down and he bent the branch a little bit down and Radharani, it was just in her grip, and she just wanted to pick that flower and she didn't see Krishna, of course. And then Krishna lifted his foot and the branch went up again. And it was going on and on like this. And uh, then there was an argument. Uh, Krishna says, I'm the gardener here. I'm the flower. And Radharani said, no, I'm Rinda Devi. I'm the queen of Rindavan, and so on and so on. So many beautiful pastimes. But Rashmi Mataji, uh, the verse you mentioned earlier about the glories of Godan Hill is a very, very famous verse. It's found in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. And it goes, like I said, the word is generally, I knew that by heart. Uh, it goes like this. Hantayam adrira balahari dasavaryo yadrama krishna charanas parashabramodha manam tanoti sahagogana yoshtayoyat paniya shuyavasa kandara kanda mulai. And with a beautiful translation of all the devotees, this Govardhan hill is the best. Oh, my friends, this hill supplies Krishna and Balaram along with their calves, cows, cowherd friends, with all kinds of necessities, water for drinking, very soft grass, caves, fruits, flowers, and vegetables. In this way, the hill offers respect to the Lord, being touched by the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram, Govardhan Hill appears jubilant. So that uh, is also found in Chaitanya Charitamrita, and uh, there is a beautiful short purport. I'll read that purport from Srila Prabhupada. It's, it's nice. Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, one of our Acharyas, explains the opulence of Govardhan Hill as follows. Paniya refers to the fragrant, cool water from Govardhan waterfalls, which Krishna and Balaram drink and use to wash their feet and mouth. Govardhan also offers other beverages, such as honey, mango juice, pilu juice, suya vasa indicates durvakras, and used to make religious offerings of argya. Govardhan also has grass that is fragrant, soft, and conducive to the strong growth of cows and increased production of milk. Thus, this grass is used for feeding the transcendental herds. Anyway, that was just some description of Giriraj Govardhan. Hare Krishna. So, 
What else? Anyone else has to offer something? Rashmi, have anything more? And Prabhuji, I also read that uh, uh, some people, some devotees, they will worship Giriraj as Krishna himself, uh, and some will worship him as a devotee, as Haridas Varya. Yes. yes. As Haridas Varya. And I was reading uh, something about it Anyone? that where the person who had written it, Narayan Swami, was saying that to worship him as a devotee is better because he, a devotee, is more merciful than Krishna himself. So to worship Giriraj as Haridas Varya is uh, suggested. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. These are all very confidential things, sir. Rashmi, you haven't been there earlier on. Of course, our Pandava had to go. Huh? Uh, shame. Uh, because he wasn't finished with his... Uh, story but uh, I can continue this story because I spoke with with Pandava Prabhu on that same topic and uh, Give me a second. Here it is. Why Nalakuvara and Manikriva didn't go back to heaven? That's an interesting question. After they have been delivered by uh, Lala, by Krishna, uh, and uh, they are, uh, regain their form, their demigod forms again after having been cursed to be the Amala uh, Arjuna trees. So why didn't they go back to heaven? After Krishna delivered Mani Kriva and Nala Kuvara, the two sons of Kuvera, of course Kuvera is a treasurer, treasurer of the demigods. Out of the Yamala Ajuna trees, he offered those two brothers to go back to heaven. But they refused. Why would they refuse? Everybody is so mad after going to heaven. People do all kind of austerities to reach the heavenly planets, from the uh, Ashtanga Yoga, Mystic Yoga, to austerities, to Tapasya, and so on, to reach the heavenly planets, to do lots of pious, pious activities. But they didn't want to go back to heaven. Srila Shiva Goswami in his Gopala Champu, and... Uh, Pandava Prabhu mentioned that book, which just sits here on my bookshelf. I have to admit, I haven't read too much into that. I need another lifetime to read all these books. <laughs> so it's a big book, a very book, twice as thick as Bhagavad Gita, the hardbound, big Bhagavad Gita. So, Srila Shiva Goswami in his Gopala Champu describes that Manikriva and Nalakuvara begged Krishna to give them shelter in Vraj. And in their next life, by Krishna's blessings, they took birth as bridge bases by names Snigdakanta and Matukanta. Their eternal service in Raj was to go from one bridge bases home to another bridge bases home and speak about what Krishna is doing today. In this way, Krishna fulfilled desires of the two brothers, with which they expressed in the following prayer. That is from Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto. Henceforward, all, may all our words describe the pastimes. May our ears engage in all reception of your glories. May your, our hands, legs, and other senses engage in actions pleasing to you. And may our minds always think of your lotus feet. May our heads offer our obeisances to everything within this world, because all things are also your different forms. And may our eyes see the forms of Vaishnavas who are non different from you. Therefore, Sri Damodarashtaka, Satyavrata Muni, 
the composer of Dhammadurashtakam, is praying to Krishna to obtain the same prema bhakti which Nalakuvara and Manikriva achieved. Tata prema bhaktim svakami prayacha. So that is a little bit of a secret. Maybe someone may have wondered why it says in the Dhammadurashtakam. Uh, they may the same prema bhakti which Nalakuvara and Manikriva achieved. May, may we get the same prema bhakti. Yes, they achieved prema bhakti huh? and not went back to the heavenly planets. Hare Krishna. So that is what Pandava Prabhu was wanting to tell us. Uh, even I did not know the details of that as well. So if one has only devotees as Facebook friends and Facebook becomes a spiritual, uh, beautiful spiritual uh, source of inspiration. So what else? Uh, what I want to mention before, should the Kirtan Ami, you haven't, you haven't been there. Uh, you may know Shruta Kirti Prabhu. He has written a beautiful book about his time with Srila Prabhupada, he's a, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He joined at a very, very young age, a young boy. And Srila Prabhupada made him his servant for a long time. He had wonderful association. There are lots of wonderful exchanges and stories between Srila Kirti and Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada just treated him as his son. And uh, he has more or less agreed to be a guest speaker in probably December. He's at the moment in Vrindavan, and um, it is too late. Uh, once we start at 7 o'clock, it's past midnight there. So, But he will be back in the West in late December, early January, and I noted it in my diary and will approach him again. And uh, my feeling is he will come and uh, be our guest speaker for December or latest January. That is a beautiful news. If you want to know a little bit more, you just Google Shruta Kirti Das and you will find a lot of references to Shruta Kirti. Right. Now, Rashmi requested me to read something from uh, the Kartik Diaries which has been compiled in 2009. We were on a parigram with uh, devotees from Leicester. So that is found, it can be found on our website. On the left side, uh, it says Kartik Diaries 2006 and 2009. So this is from 2009, uh, later Kartik Diary, Govardhan Parigram. The day before yesterday, we did Govardhan Parigrams, the circumambulation of Govardhan Hill. It is a 22 kilometer stretch, which took us some 11 hours to complete, including breakfast, lunch, and many stops at various places of spiritual significance. It is a long way if one does it all on foot. There are shortcuts where one goes with a rickshaw or uh, motor rickshaw and then stops at different places but uh, on foot that is of course the best and on barefoot that is even the very best but I would not advise uh, to completely abandon your shoes otherwise you're ending up uh, with heel pain for months and months on the go like me. So I have done this paragraph several times before all in all, this was the easiest walk out of all of them, perhaps, thanks to my well-cushioned flip-flop sandals and the rather overcast sky. Many devotees went barefoot for the whole parikram, and some went barefoot for part of it. Altogether, we had six buses with devotees from Russia, Spain, South America, and many other countries around the globe, a truly international pilgrimage. If anybody ever gets that opportunity, it's one thing to go 
with our own family around Govardhan, Parikram, or with a few friends, but to go with hundreds of devotees around, uh, that is a, is a completely different atmosphere. The starting point of our Parikram was Kushum Sarova, a wonderful place and bathing got right next to Govardhan Hill. Kushum means flowers and Sarova means lake. Therefore, the pastime with Krishna, Radharani picking flowers and Krishna uh, interacting. It is a famous place of Lord Krishna's pastime some 5,000 years ago. Radharani and the gopis used to come here to pick flowers for their pastimes at Radha Kund. Near Kushum Sarova is Manasi Ganga. Here Krishna's famous boat pastime used to take place. You can read more about it in our Kartik Diary 3 around Govardhan Hill. No parikram is complete without visiting the temple of Haridev, which is close to Manasi Ganga. Lord Chaitanya also started his Govardhan parikram 500 years ago by bathing in Manasi Ganga and taking darshan of Haridev. Therefore, all Vaishnavas follow in his footsteps till today. At Manasi Ganga, Dina Bandhu Prabhu told us, and just a word about Dina Bandhu, Dina Bandhu Prabhu, he can be found on Facebook and he is constantly giving, uh, giving lectures about Vrindavan and it's absolutely beautiful. He's uh, like the uh, bridge Basi amongst devotees who have been 20, 30, I don't know how many years he has been, in Vrindavan and guiding devotees uh, around Govardhan Hill and other pastime places of the Lord. So he told us the pastime of the origin of Manasi Ganga. After Krishna killed the demon Vats Vatsasura, who had appeared in the shape of a calf, his coward friends told him that he had incurred sin and they would not play with him anymore until he had atoned for it by bathing in the Ganges. Of course, at pastime, very quick, uh, a demon has pretended to be a calf uh, and mingled amongst uh, Krishna's calves and trying to attack and take away the cowherd boys. And so Krishna killed that demon in the form of a calf. Krishna replied, said the Ganges was far away if he's supposed to purify himself. Then by meditation he brought Ganga to that place. Therefore it is called Manasi Ganga, because Manasi means mind. Previously Manasi, Manasi Ganga was a river, but today one can only see a large lake. It is said that bathing in Manasi Ganga is thousand times more purifying than bathing in the Ganges. Here we go. If you ever want to bathe in the Ganges, think of Manasi Ganga. Our next big stop was Govinda Kund. This is an actual place where Lord Indra apologized for sending torrents of rain on the bridge buses and the cows. Because Krishna had stopped the Indra Yajna. It is also the place where Airavata, Lord Indra's elephant carrier, gave Krishna an Abhishek bath, the waters of which formed the present Govinda Kund. When Lord Indra arrived on Airavata, all the cows were frightened by this huge elephant with many trunks and ran away, forcing the cowherd boys to run after them. Only Madhu Mangal, who was lame, could not run away, but hid behind a bush. After Indra and other Demigods have left. Nanda Maharaj and the cowherd man appeared on the scene and found the most exquisite Adi paraphernalia, such as golden trays inlaid with all sorts of precious stones, chamaras, peacock fans, lamps, etc. The question the cowherd boys where this paraphernalia came from, but they could only reply that they ran away after seeing this gigantic elephant. Madhu Mangala was the only one who had seen everything. He explained that he saw a huge elephant with many trunks and a man with eyes all over his body. That, of course, was Lord India, Indra. 
There is a whole story behind why Lord Indra has many eyes over his body. With beautiful, with a beautiful crown on his head, bowed down before Krishna. He also saw a man with four heads, Lord Brahma, and many other men, all offering prayers to Krishna. Then this big elephant started to pour water over Lala, and all of them did arti to him. There were also many beautiful women dancing and singing, and after that, they all left, leaving this arti paraphernalia behind. So, the cowherd man did not really believe. They said, what was the story? Is Madhu Mangal is dreaming? He's making up. But where is this golden and jewel in laid in laid uh, paraphernalia coming from? They, they couldn't make sense of it. Our next spot was at Punchari Ka, Lauta Baba's temple. This temple is dedicated to Lauta, a cowherd friend of Krishna, who sat and waited for Krishna to return to Vrindavan after he had gone to Mathura. The deity in this temple is therefore in a sitting position. Because this temple is close to Punchari, is also known as Punchari Kalauta. The deity of Lauta is red, has moustache and is sitting. It is covered with layers of vermilion, which is regularly put on him. This deity is one of the most famous deities throughout Braj. When Akrura was taking Krishna away in, in Mathura, Lauta asked Krishna when he would return. Krishna told him he would return the day after tomorrow. Lauta said he would not eat or drink anything until Krishna returned. Therefore, the deity is offered only water but not any solid food. Lauta Sen came to this place and sat down. He is still waiting for Krishna's return after 5,000 years. We visited many other important places, but it would exceed the format of this block to describe them all. After we had accomplished half of the parikram, the sun became very hot. Fortunately, some of the parigram path was in shadow of some beautiful trees. And I realized that what a great service a tree can give and what the word shelter really means. Finally, we reached Uttavakund, which is just on the other side of Kushum Zarova. And in between is, of course, Giriraj. There we heard the story of the Puchari priest. That's an interesting story. Whose father completed 5,000 Govardhan parigrams to get a son. 5,000 Govardhan parigrams. That is inconceivable. It took him 15 years. What an austerity. If we have to chant Hare Krishna mantra for one or two rounds for 10, 15 minutes, we feel exhausted. And here, the Puchari, he did 5,000 Govardhan Parigrams, 22 kilometers, to get a son. 15 years it took him. After which, that vow, after which he got a son. It is said that one, one's tiredness from Govardhan Parigram disappears when one takes bath in Uttava Kund. And because it's called Uddhava there is also a whole story involved with Uddhava. We did not get the chance of finding out as our group moved on towards Radha Kund. So no bathing in Uddhava Kund. After circumambulating Radha Kund, we headed back towards Kushum Sarova, the starting point of our parigram. There we had delicious lunch, prasadam. By now it was 6 p.m. and the heat of the day had long disappeared. Of course, Prasadam on Parikram in Braj, that's sitting on the ground, leaf blades and buckets going around with some subchi and so on. A few devotees had to keep some monkeys at bay who were eager to snatch some of the chapatis. 
Someone, somehow or other, one brave monkey still managed to snatch a chapati from the distribution bucket. The monkeys in Vrindavan are very bold and mischievous. Tomorrow, Varshana Mataji is leaving. She was with us, yes. Uh, Samir was with us. Nandini Mataji was with us. Tomorrow, Varshana Mataji is leaving our group to visit her relatives in Mumbai. I ask everyone what was the greatest austerity so far. Varshana Kishori said that Govardhan Parigram was the toughest part for her. Nandini Radha felt the greatest austerity was being ill. And Samir said he had not, he did not do many austerities because he has been ill for the past so many days. <coughs> I felt that shopping was my greatest austerity. Of course, shopping had to be done. Which I take as a sign of some slight spiritual advancement, remembering the time when I visited Rindavan for the first time some 31 years ago, when I spent most of my time shopping, only to realize the day after our departure how quickly my precious time in the Vrindavan had slipped away. I sat in Radha Damodar temple and cried bitterly. Hare Krishna. So yes, one has to be very careful not to waste one's time with shopping. Okay, anyone has anything more? Or any questions? Ami, have you been to Vrindavan? Yes, I have been. Where have you been? Govardhan? Uh, I've been, I visited Govardhan very briefly. I wasn't be, I wasn't there for too long, but uh, uh, I mean, when I went there and when we had our tour guide there, he, he told us it takes uh, several days to do the, the parikrama around Govardhan. <laughs> So uh, it depends. <laughs> unfortunately, it depends. I, I wasn't able to stay there long enough to do the parikrama, but I managed to do the darshan of uh, Govardhan Hill. So I was I was at least fortunate yes. to to. Uh, Hare Krishna. One can do it in one day. Of okay. course, one can. Okay. Yeah. From the yeah. morning till evening, twenty-two kilometers. It can be done, huh? okay. Okay. but it can be done over several days as well. Yes, of course. So that is beautiful. By the way, Ami, you got a beautiful American accent. You didn't have that when you were in Leicester, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, um, actually, no. I, I've always uh, had this. Uh, like, I mean, I'm from Canada, so this is uh, this is the way that I, that I've always spoken. Is it? Yeah. Maybe I don't remember. <laughs> right, <laughs> That's okay. okay. Yeah, it's been quite some time. So. So, where else have you been? Govardhan. Where else in Vrindavan? Uh, so I've also visited uh, Mathura. It was uh, mm -hmm. so back in 2003, so it was, it was a, uh, a long time ago. And then just long recently, uh, uh, Goranga Prabhu, I managed to visit uh, Jagannath Puri last year. Uh, yes. During during uh, uh, pre COVID, but uh, we managed to to um, visit Jagannath Puri, which uh, was. Uh, you know, on our bucket list for quite some time. So we were very fortunate to uh, uh, visit the temple there. And it was uh, quite an experience. Which was your best experience uh, of all the, these holy places? Puri, uh, Mathura, Vrindavan? Uh, yes, definitely Mathura, Vrindavan. Uh, also uh, Jagannath Puri as well. I think, uh, I don't think there's a, a specific place that I can say that was uh, my favorite because all of them had their own uniqueness and uh, it, it's just a different feeling. Uh, it, it, it's diff very difficult to explain. Uh, I mean, um, obviously a lot of, a lot of happiness, um, but you, you feel a different kind of power there from, uh, uh, from Krishna. So um, I gotta say, all, you know, all of them were my favorite. <laughs> of course, that is Krishna's backyard. That is Krishna's private quarter where very confidential place and uh, if one goes again and again one gets deeper and deeper and there is so many things to know Rashmi Mataji you also like Vrindavan what has been your favorite place 
Prabhu ji, I don't like it. That's my dream destination. <laughs> I want to take birth in Vrindavan. I don't want to go Rival. to Vrindavan. Yes. I want to take birth and live there. It is magic. No, I have no... Um, the, every place is so unique. From Vrindakund to... Everything, everything is just magic. The cows are magic. The monkeys are magic. Everything is magic. But Govardhan Parikrama was my best. When we did, uh, the first time when I took my parents, we just went around it in a taxi. We did the Parikrama in a taxi. But when I did it on foot, that was the best experience. Yes, beautiful. Of course, there is an inner path and there is an outer road uh, to go on taxi or rickshaw or whichever, then you go on the tarmac road outside. But if we, we go on foot, we go in the inner path. It's a secret path, which is just just right where the, where the boulders, where the rocks of Govardhan starting here, just next to it. One, indeed, one must be very careful not to step on any Govardhan Shila, because they're, they're just starting, rising, rising out from the ground. Of course, there is also, it is said, that Govardhan is sinking here every year by the size of a mustard seed. He sinks into the ground. He was, 5,000 years ago, he was much bigger, much bigger. And there is also a story of the sage who, wanted Giriraj, he looked so beautiful, he wanted to take him away. And uh, it was said, you can take him, but whenever you put him down, he will not move again. So you cannot put him down. He wanted to take him to his own place. So he took the hill, he had his mystic power of lifting the hill, and then he had a call of nature. He had to... Uh, he put the hill down and he did his business and he came back and he wanted to pick him up and he couldn't pick him up anymore. And Govardhan said, well, you were told. So <laughs> you put me down, then I will stay. And he became so angry and he cursed Giriraj to sink into the ground by the size of a mustard seed every year. And since then, Govardhan Hill is sinking and uh, Maybe in a thousand, two thousand, five thousand years, uh, there is nothing left of Giriraj, Govardhan, Kijay. So let's take advantage. Amit, have you ever been to Vrindavan, to uh, Chakanad Puri, to any of the pilgrimage places in India, or even to Haridwar or Rishikesh or Amit? No, unfortunately, I haven't, Prabhu. Well, maybe. Maybe I have in my previous lives. I don't know. Yes, sure. or another time. Uh, yes, that that keeps it on your on your travel list, Vrindavan or Mayapur. It's a good starting point. Mayapur, Calcutta, Mayapur, the home of Lord Chaitanya, the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Also, we have been a small group tonight due to various uh, commitments of others, uh, but we'll see you back next Saturday. And we'll stop here. It's almost nine o'clock. Or oh, if anybody has one last question, Ami, will you join us regularly or sometimes uh, at least? Uh, it would be very, very nice to have your association again. Sure, definitely. Oh, definitely. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Write it down. Definitely. Not, <laughs> I'll try. Not any of that. Uh, maybe, perhaps, I'll try. I'll try means no, generally. So definitely, that sounds like Damishta, who, well, had definitely, okay. Uh, what we normally do, I mean, we'll do... Uh, discussing Srimad Bhagavatam. Have you ever been reading Srimad Bhagavatam? Uh, yes, yes, I do read the Sri Bhagavatam, yes. Where, where are you at? I am at... Just a minute. 
So I, I am on chapter four of... Uh, of the first canto? Of the first canto, yes. Oh, right. We are slightly ahead. We started, and I guess you started from the very beginning, did you? Yes. Yes, that is how it's supposed to be done. Huh? First canto, not jumping to the tenth canto or anything else. Huh? Read it verse by verse, chapter by chapter, moving up. It's just like our meditation of looking at the lotus feet of the deity and moving up and up and up until we come to the smiling face of the Lord, which is the tenth canto. And it is said, if someone studies her, uh, uh, reads her, uh, hears these verses of the Bhagavatam, starting from the very beginning, like we did, like you did, Ami, and uh, comes to the end of the ninth canto, one is a liberated soul, guaranteed. So, beautiful, that's what we want, uh, liberated soul. So we are on the eleventh chapter at the moment, huh? so not far from what you have been reading. Eleventh uh, chapter, Krishna returns to his city of Dwarka. And before it was Bhishma, Dev passing away and so on. So next Saturday we will be back. Today was a special day because it was Govardhan Puja. And of course on Monday, I will remind everyone, Monday is Srila Prabhupada's disappearance. So there will be plenty of things on the internet you can join in and hear some glorification of Srila Prabhupada. But next Saturday, we will be back 7 o'clock. Same link, Ami, send me your, uh, send me your phone, your WhatsApp phone. Can you send that in the chat? I'll, I'll put you on our invitation list just to remind you, just to send you the link. Okay, so, yeah, sure. You can do that in the chat now, if you like, uh, just your WhatsApp number, and I will try to find you and put you onto uh, uh, the mail out uh, each Saturday for the link and for a reminder of the program. So join us next time, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th chapter, and step by step we're discussing. We, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for question and answers and a, a bit of sharing at the end of our personal realizations. Okay, thank you, Ami. Here it is. So, here we stop. Thank you, Amit, for being here. Thank you, Rashmi, for your beautiful contributions and stories and your attachment to Vrindavan. Huh? Not that I will remember that. Not. I like, I want to be born in Raj, as a bridge passy, as a gopi. Yes, you can. And then after that, you go back home to Goloka. Hare Krishna. And Ami, thank you for really coming here. Uh, all, how did it happen? Said, I got in touch with you. That's interesting also. I regularly put out some on Facebook of these short little stories, videos, uh, and uh, advertising our program, more or less. And Ami responded with with a heart or a thumbs up, and then I I sent her a message. I didn't at that point. I didn't remember or realize who you are, Hare Krishna. So now you're here. You, you. Are, I think you are very, very well situated in this group, huh? because you're studying Shrimad Bhagavatam. We're studying Shrimad Bhagavatam. You have been to, uh, to Vrindavan and so on. Hare Krishna. Okay, we stop here. Amit, Hare Krishna. See you next Saturday. Ami, see you next Saturday. Uh, you take care. Keep well and chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.